What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here, and we're gonna build upon the last couple of videos that we've been doing, because when I take on you know experiments like how cheap can we build a computer, it's funny how many things like sort of pop up as that series progresses, right? We had part number one where you guys didn't like the parts I chose. Then we had part number two where I found out that the bottleneck, and we'll talk about bottleneck two in a second here, but the, uh, the, the results that we saw were actually being caused by something other than the CPUs when we were doing a CPU test. So yeah, here, here goes part number three, I guess. Dude, right, this is the best part right here. Watch this, watch this. Guys, there's a new Celsius S36 from Fractal Design. Yeah, so? But do you know what it does? Yeah, it makes things cool. Yeah, cooler. Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I am super excited to be doing a video with the one and only Nick's Two Cents. Yo, I am excited, man. So, so what, what are we doing? Today, we're gonna review the Celsius S36. I get that a lot. Terry, what's up? Sure, I could give you some workout tips. How's tomorrow sound? Awesome. Later. So cool. And so cool. The new Celsius S36 can make almost anything cooler. Almost. I'm so cool. So cool. So I discovered in my last video that even though we had two identical MSI GTX 1050 graphics cards right here, it's not a 1050 Ti, it's not like the Arrow, it's not like a special card, it's just their ITX PCB with a single fan, doesn't even have any power connectors on it anywhere, gets its power only from the motherboard, and we had two identical cards, here are the boxes for those right here, identical part numbers too, that we were seeing variance in performance between both of those cards. Unfortunately, the comment section in the last video, some people called me out saying that, nope, they're identical cards. Something else is happening here because they should be performing within like one FPS of each other. Um, that's not what's happening here. Now, before you guys start saying, Jay, stop addressing the haters. No, there's points to be made here. And this is good conversation to have because what I, sh what I found was when we swapped the cards, the poor performance followed the card. So that's the point of today's video. It's not about whether or not AMD is bottlenecking or Intel's bottlenecking or something was wrong in system A versus system B. The problem followed the card, which told me the card is where we have to investigate. So this is the G4560 system right here that we used in that benchmark. And the card that's currently in there right now is the one that was originally in the AMD system. The one that we realized was actually not boosting as far as we'll say, we'll say GPU number one right here. We'll call this GPU two. Hopefully we can keep track of that. Counting's hard, especially for me. You can see right here, we've had this test running for a while now. It's made quite a few loops. The temperatures have equalized. It's sitting at 62 C. You can see we got the GPU running at 99% load. And that's at 1734 megahertz. That's GPU boost 3.0. That speed is faster than what the box advertises and it's faster than what the manufacturer advertises because GPU boost 3.0 from Nvidia is a self overclocking utility. It's gonna take into account things like how much power is being drawn from the card, how much headroom there is between max TDP allowed for total board power, and what are the temperatures. If it sees that we have power left over and temperature target left over, then it will self overclock, which is what you're getting here right now. So based on the 63C, the current power draw, it's overclocking itself to 1734 megahertz. Now, if this had been a card that had a supplemental power, like a PCI Express power connector on it, you would actually be able to move the power target slider. In our case, we can't do that. And this, everything you're seeing right here is stock. MSI Afterburner is just reporting what it sees, and that's allowing us to just kind of monitor what's happening here. So we're only using Heaven here because the experiences that I'm about to show you carried across in all of our tests and all of our benchmarks, especially ones where CPU were not that important because then the GPU is responsible for everything. And the higher the FPS, the, uh, the more CPU potential bottlenecking we'll have here. And that's a whole nother video. I'm gonna revisit the whole idea of bottlenecking um, in another video. I haven't talked about that in a while. So you saw we actually went down to 1696 for a second there. That's just that one scene. It doesn't use a lot of GPU, but you can see 63C, 1734 FPS or uh, megahertz is where we basically capped out. And I'm gonna take a picture because I think my brain has reached the maximum capacity of what I can actually remember now. And I won't remember those numbers. So now I'm gonna do the official benchmark run and let us get a number here. And then I'll swatch, swap the GPU and show you the difference. That way you guys can see there was no shenanigans here, but I'm gonna try and figure out what's happening here. Anyway, we'll come back. Transition. 
So the test is complete and we got a 1657 as our score. And to kind of recap where we were when we did the video the other day, uh, with this GPU, again, the same GPU, we got a 1665. Uh, and the other GPU, we had a 1708. Remember, these are the H110 scores, not the H270, which was the original that we had used. So the score is pretty consistent. 1657, you can see our score is a 1734. And again, temps kind of chilled out around 63. If we take a look at MSI Afterburner, you can see as well that we didn't really, we didn't have any throttling really. I mean, it came down a little bit, but I wouldn't call that throttling. That's just based on the temp. Because you gotta understand the way it works is it has these states, right? The BIOS basically says the state is temperature range between here, go to here, temperature range between here as it's lower, go higher. So as the temperature does this, the frequency does that, right? So making airplane curves here. That's what basically happens. So some folks would call that throttling. That's not throttling. The actual definition of throttling is saying that it's slowing down the speeds because the temperatures have reached max. So throttling specifically refers to max, temperature, max temperatures have been achieved. Therefore, we have to slow down the CPU to keep it from going above that maximum temperature. So although people would say, yeah, this is throttled because it's slowed down based on temperature. No, that's curve. This is a curve throttled, the official definition of throttled, and I always have to argue with people about this, the official definition of throttling refers to saving a PC component from overheating. This is not overheating by any means, but there's what it looked like. You can see it was pretty damn consistent, right? So there is our GPU usage. Those, every, all those dips are between scenes. Here's our CPU temperature. This was me restarting the test right there to check for consistency. And yeah, so there's everything else right there. CPU usage, you can see that the, this is why I'm using this test because it allows the GPU to push itself as hard as it can. This is CPU usage and you can see we are not maxing out the G4560 whatsoever. So now that we've got those scores right there, a 1657. So I'm gonna take a picture of this so we can reference. And uh, yeah, we're gonna swap the card now and do the same test again. All right, so we just went and switched things over. We gotta make sure everything's identical. The only thing I have to do is close OneDrive. Have you ever noticed you un uninstall OneDrive and Windows keeps putting it back every single update? That's really, really freaking annoying. I'll show you guys once again, there's no overclocking applied whatsoever. It's all exactly the same temp limit, same power limit. Like I said, you can't even add power limit, right? 100 is the max. This is the bad GPU, I say bad. This is the lesser performing GPU. We're now running the exact same settings again, but I wanna show you guys, do you guys remember how, where it went to on the previous one? It was sitting at like 1730 something, I think it was 1739. Watch, it, watch where this one's gonna go. Remember, same GPU, 1810, immediately. Now it's gonna come down, right? But you see how it's already 60 megahertz faster than, it, than this guy was. Now 60 megahertz matters, trust me. It matters on a core or on, on a GPU like this. This is what I was trying to explain that we finally realized was happening because before we were just running our tests and going through them and we're thinking, wow, same cards, same memory, even the same series of motherboards were applicable when we did the, the first video. We tried to make it as seriously concise and, and specifically matched as possible. Some folks even suggested that the power supply was to blame. But if that was the case, you would see right now, we wouldn't see the GPU performing better out of the box uh, versus this one, right? Because now it's in the same system. And this is the way we should have done it initially, because what we actually introduced here was a variable that we didn't foresee being a problem uh, that actually ended up making our results look very differently than what the reality actually was. So by trying to create two identical systems as close as possible, I actually added flaw in the video. And yeah, so as you can see right now, we're still sitting at 1785. Temperatures are starting to come up a little bit. But what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna let this run for a minute, uh, try and balance out and figure out where the max temps are gonna be, where the max frequency is gonna drop. And then we'll run the test again and you guys will see the score and how that's actually performing better with that GPU and why my claims of the graphics card were the problem were actually accurate. So it looks like things have stabilized. Um, interesting note though is Heaven, although it is a GPU benchmark and stress test, uh, it doesn't hammer the card as hard as something like Ghost Recon does. Ghost Recon has to go on low settings and still maxes out the memory on this. Uh, but we are seeing at least identical temperatures here. It looks like we hit 64 for a second. You can see, let's wait for it to come up. This scene right here is really interesting in that it doesn't leverage the GPU as much. See how it came back up to 1772? 
On this card, remember, it dropped down into the 1690s and then came back up to 1730. But what I wanna show you now is by running this test again, it's actually one C hotter than this one now. Go figure. Anyway, we'll just throw temperature out the window because one C is not going to make a, big, a difference in terms of the curve, as you can see. But I'm gonna run the benchmark again. And remember, what was our previous score? See, this is why I had to take pictures because I'm telling you, my wife would tell you I don't remember a damn thing. All right, 1657 is what the previous score was. But we're also gonna look at the minimum and maximum because uh, that, that's actually how the score is generated, min, max, average. So yeah, we're gonna let this test run and you'll see now with the same exact system and switching the graphics card to an identical graphics card, how much performance difference there really was. So the test is done and we just got a 1704 and the previous test, right, was a 1657. Now let's compare that to what we got in the video the other day. So I bring up my spreadsheet here and I take a look at what we got 1708 with this same card on the last video. So a difference of four, which is huge. But let's talk about the min max, right? So the average FPS here was 67.7. On the previous test, right before this was 65.8. Uh, minimum of 29 flat over here, 25.7 on the, on the previous GPU, and a max of 130.8. And the previous test was a max of 127.9. So as you can see, it's pretty obvious that even though we have a truck backing in and it's backup beeper making noise, even though we have two identical cards right here, there are clearly differences between the cards. And that's gonna fall down, that's gonna come all the way down to ASICs, right? ASICs is a really fascinating subject if you actually take the time to research. ASICs exist in anything that have a circuit board. But it has to do with ASICs and anyone who understands ASICs knows the difference it makes when it comes to overclocking. Not specifically in the frequency, but the voltage and the way the voltage interacts with the core. The amount of voltage leaks, uh, the amount of power that you can actually give it, it makes a huge difference in terms, and I know I'm really simplifying this, but it makes a huge difference in terms of overclocking, and I think that's what we have happening here. I think we have two different ASICs that are causing a significant issue here. What I should have done actually before I swapped the card was check the ASIC quality. Let me see if I can do that real quick. Well, I just tried to read the ASIC quality on the card. It looks like the Pascal cards are still not showing up in GPU-Z when it comes to ASIC quality. That's too bad, because I think that would have told us a little bit of a story here. ASICs do not, ASIC quality does not guarantee an overclock. Uh, it's not like the higher the ASIC quality, the better the overclock. Um, in fact, some people would argue it's the opposite. The lower the ASIC quality, the better the overclock. But uh, I, I'm seeing a huge difference in value here would have at least given us some place to look. I'm not too concerned about the card itself having anything physically wrong with it. I think it's just the I think it's just the variance in core quality. I'm starting to wonder if maybe this is something that's present more so on the lower tiered cards though than the higher tiered cards. I have a lot of 1080s, a lot of 1070s, a lot of 1080 Ti's, and they all perform within a ridiculous margin of each other. Uh, I've, I've have four. 1080 Ti Founders cards here right now for various builds. I have tested all of them and they all pretty much run identical. The only thing that seems to vary between them is they get a little better over time because the drivers improve, but then if you take another card and throw it in, they pretty much are the same score. Not massive differences like this guy right here. So I would have loved to have put in a high tier graphics card and test this. The problem is I, I'm using the the budget build. I mean, maybe we'll maybe this will be something we test in the future on the test bench, and we'll start at the low tier, and then use a couple of identical cards in the high tier, and see how much of a difference that actually makes. But obviously, here this video shows that um, not all graphics cards are created equal. With that said, guys, I'm gonna go. Tell me what you thought of today's video. What other experiments do you think we should do? I might revisit this in the future with uh, using the test bench and testing it on very low end cards that are identical, and very high end cards that are identical. And I think it'd be cool to get them from two different sources. Because I've always had this theory in my mind that some places seem to get lower tiered or lower quality parts. I know it's really hard to, to discern, but things like stepping on CPUs, I've always noticed that the CPUs I get from Micro Center never overclock as good as CPUs you get from somewhere else. And I want to test that and see if that's true. Anyway, it looks like I'm going to be spending more money. Time to go, guys. Thanks for watching. As always, I'll see you in the next one.